Professor Allen, thank you very much for joining us tonight, and thank you for forcing me to think seriously for the first time <laughs> about expanding the House of Representatives, something I kind of vaguely aware existed as a concept but never read two sentences about. Uh, what is the case for it? Well, thank you so much for having me, Lawrence. And you're right, it does sound a little crazy. You listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene shout and you think, what, you know, more of that? How can that possibly be a good idea? But the fact is, when the Constitution was designed, the House of Representatives was intended to be the body closest to the people. And in fact, Washington intervened in the Constitutional Convention only once, and in order to affirm bringing the ratio down to 30,000 to one. Now, that's where they were then. We're at about 750,000 at this point in time to every single representative, 750,000 constituents for each representative. So what's wrong with that? It means we don't have the responsiveness that we need. Representatives can't know their constituents in a way that they could in the past. They can't handle constituent services. The volume is overwhelming. There are not changing dynamics as the demography of the country changes. As California grows, for example, it stays with, you know, roughly speaking, the same number of representatives, same for Texas and Florida. So we need the elasticity and flexibility that was always expected to be there. The idea was that Congress would grow with every 10-year census. And the, the country has become so much more complex since 1929 when they locked it in at 435. Uh, you make the case that you could have more committees in the House, for example, becoming expert on more things. I mean, why not have a committee that was about nothing but transportation safety, for example, so that when you have a train derailment, uh, there are some experts in the House of Representatives to deal with that. There you go. I mean, the business of our government has increased significantly in the past century. The budget is much bigger. There is that much more money flowing through the system, that much more to pay attention to. One of the design principles they used for the original Constitution was called Republican safety. The idea that your representatives were there to be the safeguard for your liberties, safeguard for securing rights and the like. The truth is we've got so much business going on these days, it's not clear that Congress can play that job fully of protecting and providing for Republican safety. So yes, an increased Congress would be a better watchdog actually for our liberties. What, what about the Marjorie Taylor Greene problem? Would that kind of voice become louder in a bigger house or be more muted in a bigger house? Well, the great thing about a bigger house is, again, that representatives would be closer to their constituents. And what that means is there's actually a chance for local news, local knowledge, local information to start to do a better job again. Right now, we are operating in a democracy with news deserts all over the country. And then the only access that people have to information about their representatives comes through national media. And that produces a really distorting and polarizing effect. So if we could get representatives closer to the people again, there's you know more degrees of connection, greater likelihood that you'll be able to pool healthier knowledge about what's going on and make better decisions.